Okay, in this video we're going to talk about solving second order linear homogeneous differential equations with constant coefficients. So that's kind of a mouthful. Um, let's take a look at the sort of general idea of the solutions. So this is a summary, so there's a lot going on. Um, so we're talking about second order linear homogeneous differential equations. And what that means is that we can write them in the form uh, a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y is equal to zero. So it's really important that they're in exactly that form. And for this to work, we need a, b, and c to be constants. Um, so we're dealing with constant coefficients. Uh, second order just means the highest uh, derivative you see is the second derivative. And um, with that, we have something called the characteristic equation, which you'll notice is just actually a quadratic that has um, r as its variable, and it's a times r squared plus b times r plus c is equal to zero. And if you look at the differential equation again, you'll notice it's kind of like we just replaced all the y double prime, y prime, y. We replaced those with r to kind of the power of the derivative. Um, and that's basically what happened. So in this case, it turns out the solution to these things is really related to the solutions of um, this characteristic equation. And what we can do is we can calculate the discriminant. So the discriminant, if you remember, is the thing inside the radical of the quadratic formula. So it's b squared minus 4ac. And if the discriminant is positive, you might remember from like algebra 2 or algebra 1 maybe, that you get uh, two real roots and they're different from each other. So two distinct real roots. And in that case, the general solution to this differential equation has the form y equals c1 e to the r1x plus c2 e to the r2x, and you're done. Um, and if the discriminant equals zero, you only get one real root, but it's a double root. And so you get this weird situation where you can't really write c1 e to the rx plus c2 e to the rx because um, that's writing the same thing twice. So uh, what we do is we introduce uh, this extra x factor. And so that's the thing you gotta really keep in mind. So the solution looks almost the same, but it's a little bit different. And right there is your difference. So it's y equals c1 e to the rx plus c2 x e to the rx. And I kind of refer to that as the multiply in an x rule. Um, and you actually end up using it quite a bit with these sorts of things. So that's if the discriminant is zero, or more specifically, if when you solve this quadratic, you get exactly one real root, and it's a double root, but it's one root. We could also get um, the discriminant is less than zero, and if you remember that, that means that we actually get um, complex roots. So I'm gonna call them alpha plus or minus beta i. And in that case, our solution looks kind of crazy. It's um, y equals e to the alpha x times the quantity c1 cosine of beta x plus c2 sine of beta x. And that looks sort of insane, but it turns out that actually this thing uh, comes from using Euler's formula on something that really just looks like the uh, first solutions that we wrote. And if you remember, Euler's formula looks like e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. All right, so most people when they take differential equations, they find things a little bit overwhelming to begin with. So the first thing you can do to do yourself a giant favor is to remember each of these situations. So if you're getting two distinct roots, you know what your solution will look like. If you get one root, you know what your solution will look like. If you get complex roots, you also know what your solution will look like. So make sure you know those. And now what I'm gonna do is a couple of examples. They're actually all just gonna have real roots, um, but I think it's good to kind of cluster them together when you're first learning these. So let's take a look. So we want to solve y double prime minus 8y prime plus 12y is equal to zero. So the first thing we do is we write down the characteristic equation. So really the first thing you do is you look at this thing and you think this is a second order linear differential equation and it's homogeneous. And you might not even know what non-homogeneous means yet. It just means um, homogeneous means that it's equal to zero. So as soon as it's equal to zero, you think, I need to find the characteristic equation, which is looks exactly identical to this, um, but we replace all of our primes, our y's with r's, and then they're to the associated power. Um, if you think of y, um, kind of just y, not y prime, 
as the zeroth derivative, then you're kind of r to the zero. But either way, people don't usually have a problem with that. So r squared minus 8r plus 12 equals zero. Turns out a lot of solving this is just related to how well you know quadratics. So I'm gonna look at this and factor it, right? I need, uh, it's gonna be r minus two and r minus six equals zero, kind of by inspection. So I know that either r is two or r is six. As soon as I solve this, I have to think which of the three cases am I dealing with? So I'm dealing with the case where I have two distinct real zeros or roots. So that means that I know the solution. The solution is going to look like y equals c1 e to the r1x plus c2 e to the r2x. So I can just write my answer. So the solution is going to be y equals c1 e to the 2x plus c2 e to the 6x. And that's all there is to it. It's really the, the thing you have to overcome is kind of like a fear of these. And also you have to remember kind of a lot of things. Um, but there's almost no substitute for that. Let's look at another one. So we're gonna try to solve y double prime plus three y prime equals zero. So this is still um, the type we're dealing with, right? It's uh, second order, it's uh, linear, and it's um, a differential equation, obviously, and it equals zero, so it's um, homogeneous. So we can solve it using what we've been doing. So I'm gonna write down the characteristic equation and that's gonna be, in this case, it's just r squared plus three r. Um, and there's no constant term for this one because there was no y in the original differential equation. So this we can factor, and then we know that either r is zero or r is negative three. So I thought this was a good example to do because that r equals zero, um, while yeah, we have two real distinct zeros or roots, um, it, the answer is gonna end up looking a little different. So we're gonna plug into that form that we used last time. So our solution is gonna look like y equals c1 e to the zero x plus c2 e to the negative three x, but then e to the zero x is e to the zero, which is one. So we can actually rewrite this as y equals c1 plus c2 e to the negative three x. And that's what our general solution looks like in this case. All right, let's do one more example just to make sure that we really got this. So we're gonna to try to solve y double prime minus 10 y prime plus seven y equals zero. Um, it fits the form that we're dealing with. So we're gonna write down a characteristic equation. So they start to get much more challenging when you start mixing up what's happening. Um, but I think when you're first learning, it's good to kind of group them, just look at these then we'll look at just the other types and so on. Uh, this I look at and I try to factor it in my head. And I think I don't really think this factors well. So I'm gonna use the quadratic formula. So then I have to remember the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula is, so I'm gonna do it in terms of R. So R is equal to the opposite of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC. So that's the discriminant that we looked at before all over two A. And now I just need to use it. So in this case, a is equal to one, b is equal to negative 10, and c is equal to seven. So we're just gonna substitute things in. So we get r is equal to, so opposite of b, plus or minus, and we get square root of b squared is 100, minus four times seven times one, and then all over two, two times one really. Um, and we can simplify this. So we end up with this. And then a little bit more. Um, so I simplified the radical because I think it's useful to do that. So square root of 72 is the square root of 36 times two and the square root of 36 is six. So I get six root two. And then we can keep going. I think it's really useful to write the roots separately. So I write r equals five plus three root two and r equals five minus three root two. And now these are actually both real and they're definitely different. So we have two distinct real roots, and that means we can write our solution. So it all comes down to matching the form, knowing what to do once you match the form. So in this case, all of our examples have had two real distinct roots, and so all of our solutions have looked very similar to each other. They're just some linear combination, like we're multiplying each thing by something different, linear combination of 
e raised to one of the roots times x. And so in this case, we get y equals c1 e to the quantity, make sure you put parentheses around this, five plus three root two x, and then plus c2 e to the quantity five minus three root two x. Okay, so that was three examples of solving these, and they all had real and distinct roots, so all the solutions look the same. I hope you find this helpful, and good luck.